So hear me out. What is my opinion about the best way of eating for weight loss for obese Americans? Hey folks, my name's Allie. Let's get started. Now I know the title and maybe even the thumbnail of this video might attract people who are used to my version of keto. They probably haven't seen much or any of my videos. Um, and I didn't mean for the title to be clickbait. Um, this is really what I think and I'm gonna try and explain to you why I feel this way and why the ketogenic diet is probably, in my opinion, the best weight loss uh, way of eating for obese Americans. I used to weigh 320 pounds. It took me two years to get down to 150 and I've been in maintenance mode for, oh gosh, almost a little over a year now, so about a year and a half. And so I definitely used keto for fast weight loss because I was unhealthy. I think I was pre-diabetic. I had the, the black patches on my skin from the insulin and I had numbness in my fingers. And so I was definitely at a point where I had to make a change for me because I, I realized, and I always knew I was unhealthy, but I realized that it was getting really serious. So why do I think that the ketogenic diet is the best diet for obese America? Well, I have a few reasons. Number one is that I think that the ketogenic diet really appeals to the American palate, meaning we are used to eating lots of meat in America. We are used to eating vegetables and then we're also used to eating carbs. But with the ketogenic diet, you're cutting out those carbs, but you still get to eat those other things that we're used to. You know, we love our burgers. We love our chicken breasts. We love our fried chicken. We love, you know, we love lots of food that, you know, revolve around meat. Um, I think probably most America eats meat a few times a day, you know, maybe two or three times a day for, you know, all three meals if they want to. So I think going keto, if you're just cutting out one of the things, the carbs that we are overeating on, I think that the rest of the diet kind of balances out and it would be easier to transition to a ketogenic lifestyle rather than um, just a lifestyle where you might try and go vegetarian and I'm not, you know, discrediting vegetarians or vegans or anything like that, but I just think that those types of diets are too drastic for America. Um, because it doesn't fit with our culture, our values, um, and our palates. You know, you can still get your favorite types of meats, you just get it without the breading, right? If you want fried chicken, you just put some chicken on the grill with some oil and you fry it up, but you don't have to, you know, bread it. So I think it's not too much of a change that you would have to make when it comes to things like meats and vegetables. Again, you are cutting out all the carbs, but, you know, when you kind of get used to keto, I mean, after the first month, I really didn't miss bread. I mean, you kind of realize that a lot of the things that we eat are just vessels to bring food to our mouths, like bread for sandwiches, chips for dips, you know, um, or they're just kind of fillers. Like I used to eat lots of rice to feel full, but I don't really have to do that because it's not my favorite thing. <laughs> you know, rice is kind of bland. So, I mean, it's just, it's going to depend, but I think for a lot of people, the taste of the ketogenic diet is going to mesh well with what they're used to. So the second reason I think it's one of the better weight loss or mechanisms or ways of eating for obese America is because compared to other weight loss programs or ways of eating, it can be inexpensive. Um, really what you're doing is you're cutting out, you know, things like breads and pastas and cakes and sugary things, and you're replacing them with a little bit more meat and vegetables. Um, especially when it comes to actual programs like Jenny Craig, you know, you have to pay memberships for those. And then when you stop paying the membership, you're not allowed to go to the meetings. I'm assuming, you know, that just makes sense. Um, uh, you don't have to buy really books or anything. There's so much free information. You know, it's really, you can just Google lists of food that are allowed on keto and it's basically meats and vegetables, you know, watch out for things that are carby or like, you know, legumes and bread and grains and all those. Definitely inexpensive, so much more free information. And y'all, I mean, I know that they say that our economy is in a good place, but I still feel like I'm kind of broke all the time. <laughs> so I need a way of eating that is inexpensive. And then when you get into other ways of eating that are healthier, maybe like vegan or vegetarianism or even paleo, a lot of those require you to spend more money. Paleo, for example, they focus on that whole organic food. You know, veganism, if you're missing the foods that you used to eat before you went vegan, you have to pay more for those premium, you know, meat-free dishes. Um, it's harder to eat out, kinds of things. So I think money-wise, keto would appeal to more Americans. 
Number three is that when you start keto um, and you research it for yourself, and I found this to be true for me, you know, I didn't know what the difference really between a carb, a fat, and a protein molecule were, but now I like, I researched that for just, you know, a week or two before starting the diet, and I just felt like I was learning so much. And so I think that, you know, a lot of Americans don't realize, you know, the effects that these nutrients have in our bodies. A lot of Americans really lack, you know, understanding about is just how much they're eating and what is actually in the food, like what the food is made up of, you know, is it sugar or is it fats and protein or is it a mix? So I think, you know, we need that education a little bit. So if you even just are looking into these types of diets that are lower carb or any type of diet, really, you're probably going to learn a little bit about nutrition. And I think that would be very, very helpful because I think, you know, if people are like me, they don't really know the difference. And so it's good to know the difference and why things affect your body the way that they do. Okay, number four kind of related back to number two, but you do have these clear cut lists that you can follow. You just Google them, go on Pinterest, type in keto food lists. I mean, you'll find all of this information for free and it really, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of trying to lose weight. I mean, if you, like I say, stick to meats and vegetables, you know, and then if you want a sweet treat like dark chocolate, okay, you know, in moderation. Growing up for me, weight loss always just seemed like this mysterious thing that I needed to find the secret to. Um, and so keto really helped with that because I said, I'm just cutting out all these calories from all this carb, you know, food this carby food that I don't need, that I'm not eating anymore. So I get to eat a little bit more of my meat and vegetables, but I'm full. Like, because I was sticking to that list of meats and vegetables and like some nuts, you know? So I just think that there's all this information that makes it really clear cut on what you need to actually do to lose the weight. Okay, now my fifth reason is that it's easier to partake in the, in the food culture that we have in America on a ketogenic diet. You know, if you go vegetarianism or vegan or whatever, or even paleo or just some other type of diet, like, you know, where you're eliminating foods. I think the ketogenic diet is the easiest one to eat out on and to celebrate, you know, around food with. Because, you know, there, if you've seen my restaurant video, there, you can go out to pretty much any restaurant and find, you know, a non-breaded meat and vegetables. Like, it's not going to be that hard. So I think that um, it's good for Americans because so much of our culture revolves around food. Most cultures do, right? We, all cultures revolve around food and eating and sharing that experience. But for Americans, it's just a lot of our culture revolves around food. So, you know, we eat out a lot. We, um, whether it's fast food or casual dining or whatever. So it's just, it's easier, I think, on a ketogenic diet because you have all those options to, to kind of help you stay on track. You know, you're not going to go out, be invited with family, and then think, well, am I going to eat something that's not on my diet? You know, if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, am I going to sit there miserably? And so that can kind of play into, like, the emotional side of weight loss, like wanting to interact with others around food because it's such a part of us as humans and as American humans especially that it's just we need that that gathering around food and so with keto you can definitely do that a little bit more easily I think. Okay so my next reason on why I think keto would be the easier weight loss mechanism for obese Americans is because I mean when you cut out that sugar you're gonna get rid of the diabetic problem but the issue is um, is that we have about and I just looked this up on CBC whatever I googled it is that we have about 100 million Americans. That's about a third of Americans are diabetic or pre-diabetic. And that's a huge issue because diabetes causes, you know, heart disease. It causes amputations, ulcers. It causes kidney failure. It causes strokes. And it's the seventh leading cause of death. So it's a big issue. It's an expensive issue. It's a, you know, if you, if you probably know somebody in your family that struggles with diabetes. And so I think if we can just cut out the sugar, <laughs> if we cut out the sugar, and our attachment to sugar, I feel like we can improve so many people's lives. It improved my life, okay? I was so self-conscious, you know, and I wasn't even dealing with the worst, you know, the diabetic issues that I was dealing with, but like I was so self-conscious of people saying that ring around my neck or on the tops of my toes. So I just think, you know, once we get rid of that addiction to sugar, people will see that it's not just for weight loss, but it's for overall health and how sugar has affected their health. Okay, the last reason I think the ketogenic diet would be the best and maybe easiest mechanism of weight loss for obese Americans is because it's so adaptable. You know, everybody in America um, does their own thing, right? Like, I, I go to work until 4 and then I come home. And some people work nights. And, you know, some people have kids. Some people don't have kids. Some people are 
you know, in poverty, some people are doing pretty good. So <laughs> I think that it's a diet that can definitely work based on your lifestyle, your needs and your goals. And I've talked about this so much, but it's such an adaptable diet. You basically stick to your staples, meats and vegetables, you know, depending on your budget, you're going to find something that you can eat. It's not like you have to spend a whole lot of money for a program or for very special ingredients. You know, it's just, it's real food that you can find in the grocery store. I go to Walmart because I'm broke all the time and you're going to find what you need. 70% of Americans are overweight, 37.7% are obese or extremely obese, and then 7.7% are extremely obese. I was in that 7.7%. .7. I had a BMI of like 40-something, okay? I was 320, 5'11", okay, do the math. I was, I was there, and so keto helped me, and I'm so thankful I found it. You know, there are lots of reasons why I was motivated to do keto it's because i heard about other people saying how easy it was i was realizing how common sense it was i was realizing how easy it was to do for me and my tastes you know i was just your i was just your overweight american your obese american extremely obese american okay <laughs> and i know that it's not going to work for every single person but I do think that a shift towards a lower carb lifestyle is what America needs because we have that diabetic issue because so much of our food revolves around fast foods that are, you know, breaded and fried burgers, sandwiches, you know, things that you buy outside of the home that you're not making. Um, and I think just that shift towards cutting out the excess, you know, cutting out sugar, candies, cakes, sodas with lots of sugar in them. I still drink diet soda, but just without the sugar and the calories. So, I mean, once we realize what a good diet actually looks like, what portions actually look like, once you start measuring out your nutrients and your calories, I think that the ketogenic diet would work best for that because it teaches you about those things. Well, folks, that's about it for today. I'm playing with my lighting. I'm going a little blind, so I'm going to cut it there. But I hope that you did enjoy it. If you did, um, don't forget, you can find me on Pinterest at Allie McWally. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at keto underscore Allie. I also have a blog, and you can find me on Facebook as well. All right, you guys, I will see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.